What I'd like to do now is take a look at some commands we'll be using to change ownerships, change permissions uh, of files. This is something you'll be doing quite a bit of over the course of the next couple of assignments. And as always, I encourage you to ask as many questions as you need to to feel comfortable with the material. I present these videos to kind of illustrate some of the points, but uh, certainly hope that it stimulates more discussion and, uh, and further questions. Now these commands are fairly easy to remember in the fact that they all begin with ch, ch meaning change. So uh, commands like chmod, which is change file mode, this is the command that's used to change the permissions on individual files or groups of files. And we'll see how that works. We'll take a look at the uh, files in this particular directory. Have a couple of files here and then several subdirectories the file, my file, and then I have a file that we can assume is a script, it's called my script. Now there's nothing different between a script file and a data file or just a text file. They're, they look the same to Unix. Uh, the permissions are what makes them different. So let's assume that I want to change the permissions on my file. And what I want to do is right now I have read-write permissions for the owner, the owner being Nuke. I have read permissions for the group, which also happens to be Nuke, and that's not always a given. Uh, that's something that's a little confusing when you see Nuke and you compare that to other versions of Unix or Linux. Usually the group name is different. Um, that's just something that, that Nuke does in the way it's configured. It creates a group called uh, the same name as the user, but typically you'd see something like Nuke and maybe Users or Nuke and maybe a ACCT if this user was a member of an accounting group or something like that. What we want to do is we want to change so that the Nuke group has write permissions and that the world has write permissions. Currently the world just has write uh, read permissions. Now there's two ways to use the chmod command and I'm just going to cover this real briefly because we don't have a lot of time in the course of a 10 minute video to go into specifics but but uh, certainly ask questions in the news groups and I'll be glad to uh, to cover this more in detail. There is what is known as the symbolic mode which uses letters to represent permissions and user types and then there is octal mode which uses a series of three numbers in some cases four to represent uh, permissions. It's uh, the octal mode is from what I've seen more commonly used uh, in the Unix admin world just because it's a little more terse, it takes less uh, time to type, but it does take a little bit more getting used to. So what I want to do first is use the uh, symbolic mode and I'm going to add the write permission to the group for this file. So I first want to tell it that I want to work with a group type user, a G makes sense there. And I want to add plus the write permission. So what I have done change the file mode for the group adding write permission to the file called my file. And as we can see now I have the write permission on my file. Could do the same thing with owner. Uh, pardon me with uh, with the world, world is represented by an O here for other. That's done so that you don't confuse it with the uh, write permission. Again, a we use the plus. We want to add the write permission for my file. And now we have read write permission for both. Now I could also combine those into one command by doing Notice I have combined the group and world permission changes, separating them with a comma, and then space and the file name. You can also do multiple types of permissions at one time. I could have done GRWX and a comma and O plus RWX. If I wanted to add all permissions. And now we have read, write, read, write, execute for both the group and the world. If you want to take those permissions away, simple matter of using a minus instead of a plus. And now notice that we have taken away the write permission for the group.
as we listed here. Octal notation, as I said, takes a little bit more getting used to because what it does is it uses a series of three numbers. And as I said before, sometimes four for special type permissions. But let's suppose that I want to set permissions read, write, read, write, read, write. In other words, take away the execute permissions for everyone, but just make it read, write for all three types of users on my file. That would be represented by chmod666 my file. Why? Well, first we notice that the change did do exactly what we expected. Read, write, read, write, read, write. Each one of these numbers represents a different user class. The first digit is the user or the owner. The second is the group. The third is the world. Then it's a matter of arithmetic to uh, come up with a permission that you want to use. For instance, if I want to get read, write, read, write, read, write, read, write is represented by a six, four plus two, four being the read permission plus two being the write permission equals six. If I wanted to uh, do this for all three user types, I would just repeat that same number. By the same token, I can use a 777 permission to give everyone read, write, execute, meaning that 4 plus 2, the read permission plus the write permission, plus 1, which is the execute permission, which gives us a total of 7, granting the 7 permission for each user type gives us read, write, execute for all users. I can also do combinations of those if I wanted to do a 660, for instance, on my file. That gives read write for the owner, read write for the group, and zero means no permissions whatsoever. And notice that the world or other has no permissions now. So those are the two types of uh, modes that you would use with a change mode command. Now I want to take a look at the file my script and how it relates to permissions. Now remember I said this we can assume is a script by its name, but it could have been called Tom. Joe, Bob, what have you, and we could still run this command as a script. Now one thing that's different in Unix from Windows is that it's the permission that dictates whether a file is a executable or a runnable script in Unix. In Windows it's typically because the file has a particular extension. So for instance files that end in .exe, files that end in .bat, files that end in .com, in the MS-DOS world, those are files that the operating system knows are executable. They should be able to be executed as a program returning some value or uh, performing some task. In Unix, there is no such thing as an exe file or a com file or a bat file. You can certainly add those extensions if you wish, but they don't really mean anything to the operating system. The characteristic that makes a script runnable or executable is the X permission, the executable, execute permission. Let's assume I want to run my script right now. I might now the reason I prefix this with this period and slash deals with pathing issues. Um, the home directory is not part of my path so it doesn't know to look for the my script script in this directory. Uh, we'll go into that a little bit more in a different uh, video, but for right now, um, just assume that I want to use this period slash to prefix the name of the script I want to run. But notice it comes back and it says permission denied. The operating system, or the shell more, more correctly, is telling me that I can't run this script because I don't have uh, an execute permission on this script. Now what I want to do I'm going to set well set it for 755 for my script. So now if I do the slash my script, it runs and it just simply returns the words hello world. It is this X permission that makes a script runnable. Remember that because when you uh, VI your scripts initially they are going to probably have read and write permissions only.